celebration we have as Christians. Yes, even more important than Christmas and far more important than just uh, Easter bunnies, eggs and chocolates. Easter Sunday celebrates Jesus' return from the dead. It's a time to challenge yourself, a time to grow, a time to stop settling for what is simple and easy and just become the best version of yourself. Yeah, all of this sounds great. Uh, time to celebrate Jesus' return from the dead, a uh, time for us to grow, to challenge ourselves, to become a better person. Uh, but how? How do we do this? Well, there's three simple things that we usually do. We pray, we fast, and we give. And it's a time for people to practice. Justice stirs God by praying. Justice stirs yourself by fasting. And justice stirs your neighbor by giving and nowadays it's more common to find people that either give something up give something up or take something on and this is to help in this transformation that we have to have like inside like in our hearts in order to become the best version of ourselves so Lent is a period of 40 days 40 days that you have to work towards the transformation of yourself to become better, to make sure that you are fixing the mistakes that you made in the past, uh, to fix relationships, um, just to become a better version of yourself, right? And these four days begin with Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday is there to remind us that we all make mistakes. We are not meant to be on earth forever and remind us that we're fragile. And it reminds us this by saying, remember that you're dust and to dust you shall return. Genesis 3, 19. So you see, once you realize that we're fragile, we make mistakes and that we're not meant to stay here, then what other option is there than to just live your best life? To be the best you can be. And that's what Lent is all about. And you see, Lent has special colors, special symbolisms that now May is going to talk you through. So, what colors represent Ash Wednesday? Purple is the color of the robes that are worn by priests at this time. The symbolism of the color purple in this context represents penitence, remembrance, spiritual wealth and royalty. Purple symbolizes royalty and spiritual wealth because it was so expensive to get this type of dye that only rich people and rulers could afford it. So why purple? What are we remembering? 
At this time, we are remembering parts of Jesus' life. The Gospels, for each Sunday, cover the following Bible stories. Jesus in the desert being tempted by the devil. When Jesus spoke to Moses and Elijah on the mountain. When Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for water at the well. And when Jesus heals the man that was born blind. All of these stories are focusing on miracles which impact on people's faith and confirm Christ's majestic and life-saving identity. First, when Jesus rejects Satan's temptation in the wilderness, he claims his identity as Christ, the Son of God. Then, when Jesus talks on the mountain, the disciples are able to witness his divinity and are empowered to walk with Jesus. The woman at the well was told to repent and to sin no more and to drink from the well of eternal life, which is his salvation. So their conversation means that her faith was renewed, her sins were forgiven, and we learn about the gift of eternity. The healing of the man born blind and the resurrection of Lazarus are miracles of compassion and physical evidence that Christ on earth is with us and they teach people in their communities and those far away about the good news. What else are we remembering? Purple is the colour of remembrance and reminds us of mourning and the crucifixion. It helps us to remember and to reflect on the things that we have done and things that we want to say sorry for. It's a time to reflect on what we can do to become better versions of ourselves and this all begins on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent and marks the start of a 40 day period of time leading up to Easter Sunday. On Ash Wednesday, Christians go to church and get a marking of the cross on their forehead in ash, which is made of the palms from last year's Easter Sunday, the Sunday that begins Holy Week, the week leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. Getting a cross on your forehead is important for Christians because it symbolises our dedication to our faith and it allows us to reflect on God creating us in his image from dust and reminding us that to dust we shall return. We will return to God because of his sacrifice of Jesus. The ashes symbolise both death and repentance. During this period, Christians show repentance by mourning for their sins because they believe that Christ died for them. All of these symbolisms are great, but where did they come from? Alex is going to tell us the story of how it all began. Thanks, May. Um, so, after Jesus' baptism, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, you can imagine that he was pretty hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. Jesus, trusting in his faith, answered, It is written, Man shall not live alone on bread, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, believing that he could tempt Jesus further, the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now this means that Jesus would be fully protected by God, even if he fell. But Jesus, trusting his Father, told him, It is also written, Do not put your Lord God to the test. Now the devil felt that it was time for his last test, for if he could not tempt Jesus now, then he would not be able to tempt him at all. 
So once again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all of their glory. Uh, he said to Jesus, all of this I will give you, only if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil, knowing that he was defeated, left Jesus and the angels came and attended to him. This is the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. It was him solidifying his identity as the Son of God. He knew the ultimate truth, that God was the Father, and that he was his Son, and that he could place all of his trust in God. Now, he didn't need an easy way out or to prove himself, because he was secure with his identity. He knew who he was, and he knew what he believed in and he knew that the future salvation for his people was coming. So he spent 40 days resisting temptation and he kept to his beliefs with the strength of God. Now, really, we do the same thing today. We just do it slightly differently. We have temptations like sweets or fizzy drinks and during Lent, we show our resolve and we use our faith in God to resist these temptations. Through resisting these temptations, we're strengthening our faith and reminding ourselves that salvation is there for all of us. We replicate the temptation that Jesus went through and we show solidarity, trust and belief in God. Just as Jesus spent 40 days in the desert, our Lenten journey also lasts 40 days. This time is a preparation for the celebration of Easter, a time where Christ's light will shine through the darkness and true salvation will be revealed. This period of time begins with Ash Wednesday, as May mentioned before. But just before Ash Wednesday comes Shrove Tuesday, something that we better know now as Pancake Day. It's the day where we finish our preparations for our Lenten journey. It's a day of celebration and a day of feast. And it's the last big feast that we have before our 40 days of fasting. It's also a day to use up all the food in the house that we give up traditionally during Lent. But there's more to Shrove Tuesday than just picking out on pancakes. It's a day to confess our sins, but it's also a day that we receive absolution from these sins. Now Lent ends with Easter Sunday, which of course is the day that Jesus rose. Now, we use Lent as an opportunity to reflect on what it means to be a follower of Christ. It's a time to grow and strengthen our faith, which binds us all together, and it makes all things possible because of our love and commitment to Jesus. We use this time of Lent to reflect on Jesus' life and the suffering and sacrifice that he went through. Now, I hand you over to Molly, who's gonna let you know some things that we can do during Lent. So what can we do during Lent to reflect on the season and our relationship with Christ? Often when we think about Lent, one of the first things that comes to mind is fasting, or giving something up. As in, I'm going to give up chocolate for Lent. And that's sort of right, but not quite. Fasting is not just about giving things up, or subtracting things from our lives. It's also about adding something. We subtract something so that we, or perhaps God, can add something new. And so the answer to the question that we ask ourselves during Lent of, should I give something up or take up something new, is to do both. Because what happens in the void left by what we choose to give up? If I give up an hour of video games or social media, what do I do with that extra 60 minutes? If I give up chocolate or takeaways, what do we do with that extra money? When you stop doing something you're used to doing, you notice different things. And Lent is just like that. We take something up, we take notice of different things in the void of what we gave up. Lent is a season where the church pauses and takes notice of the journey of Jesus to the cross. And by us giving something up, we are unplugging, allowing ourselves the time and the freedom to notice things too. So in the absence of what you may give up, what can you take notice of? 
Maybe you give up an hour of gaming or social media and you add time for silence and stillness to our lives that are full of noise and movement. Maybe you give up gossiping and you add prayer when we're usually silent towards God. Maybe you take care of creation by trying to use less single-use plastic, by turning off power, taps, and take up noticing the impact that you have on the world. Whatever it is, by not subtracting for the sake of it, and by adding something positive and new, we're invited to notice God. The way he's actively working in and around us each day, the way he speaks through scripture and through our communities, the whispers in the silence, and the shouts from things like the dramatic sunsets. So I encourage you to subtract something from your lives this Lenten period, in order to add an opportunity to notice God and others around you. So, there you go. Hopefully, after this, all the questions that you guys had in your heads in the beginning about what the meaning of Lent is or how to approach it are now solved. Um, so I remember, remember that we come from ashes and to ashes we will return. Remember to live your life to the fullest because we're not meant to stay on earth forever. So once you know this, then just live your best life. Open your heart to transform yourself. As Jesus did in the desert, fight temptation, become better. And remember to give something up, but also to take something on. And to try to notice those things that you usually miss because of social media, or the way that you act, or the way that we treat others. Remember the meaning of it. So go on, uh, uh, put effort into your Lent, and happy Easter everyone. Thank you so much.